June 7, 2003, Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward treat boxing fans to a third classic confrontation. Ward loses a unanimous decision, while according to CompuBox, getting hit with 349 punches. While some punches do more damage than others, at the end of what he insists was his last prize fight, the collective force of all those blows has left Mickey Ward a tired, battered warrior. Standard procedure in the state of New Jersey is for a ringside doctor to examine all boxers after they fight, either in the ring or in the locker room. Talk to me, man. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Head clear? Bumped up, yeah. I've seen like, you know, when you get hit, you get that dizzy. I was getting that, but. Uh -huh. Is it cleared up? Has it cleared up? Somewhat. Not somewhat. A double vision? I'll lose a little. I got hit right here in the temple. Can you have a Okay. Can you make a fist? Right here. Okay. Close it up for me. Oh, I got it. Okay. Well, it's probably okay, but it, it ought to be x rayed. It ought to be x rayed. Let me just look in your ears. <sighs> Why did I pick this one? Why did you say that now? 30 years later? I would take him tonight and get a cat scan of his head. Okay. Uh, you know, he took a lot of shots. You know, he looks okay right now, but, you know, he could have a delay. Right. All right. I always take him to get the cat scan. He's not 100%. And I don't think it's worth the risk to wait and see. The doctor requested it. Oh, boy. Did you hit it a little bit? Okay. Can you feel it back? Yeah. Does that feel better? Yeah, it's all. Ward is taken to the trauma unit at the Atlantic City Medical Center. There, a team monitors his heart rate, x-rays his hands, and uses a CAT scan to check for head injuries or facial fractures. It's part of the sport though, you know. I mean, this is why you train hard, but you know, to be able to take this and stuff. And it's my last fight though anyway, so I'm glad to be able to get out right now, you know. Don't want to go through this no more. Nah. In the emergency room, Ward discovers his shoes are missing. He asks an all too familiar face for help. You got any shoes? How'd you get here with your shoes? Mickey's got no shoes. No, I got sandals. Well, you can walk out of here at least. <laughs> He's always. Oh, oh Mickey's yeah. got his socks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I need a pair of 10s. <laughs> yeah. I need a size 10. <laughs> you size that? Yeah, right. You got your shoe. <laughs> hey, Mick, how you feeling, baby? Good. 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 I'll see you back there. Listen. I'm sore. I'm very sore still. Uh, my, my facial bones and stuff are still sore. Uh, my head's sore. My body's sore. They CAT scans and the CAT scans come out negative. And I got uh, six stitches right here over the left eye and uh, it's healing good. I had a little bruising on the knuckles. That ain't too good when your hands ain't sore. You, that means you ain't hitting the guy you're fighting. <laughs> was it a double vision? That's what I was more worried about. I thought it was something like a retina problem or what have you, but I got my retinas checked and everything's fine. I think it's swelling behind my eye or what have you that's, that's causing that. So once the swelling goes down, it, it should go away. He's gonna give me like the basic physical, you know, I'll see how I'm doing and stuff like that, take the stitches out. What time's the appointment? Uh, I believe 1.30. 1.30. And the last name? Ward. Uh, when I spoke last, you were still having some dizziness. Right in the eye. Yeah. Now, when you say in the eye, what do you mean? Like, um, just double vision, like, um, now, in so my left eye. So you get double when I go up. It gets more so? Yeah. More when you go up? Now, if you close your eyes, do you feel dizzy? No. Okay, so this is quite a bit different than after the second fight. Right, yeah, I never, I never had this before. Okay. I'm gonna give you a little push, okay? So that you know it's coming, but I don't want you to, I want you to keep your balance, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully this little bit of blurriness is gonna go away over the next the week vision. or so, yeah. Okay. It's conceivable it's not to do with your eyes. I don't think so, I think you're fine, mm -hmm. okay? But if it was getting worse or anything like that, you need to call me right away. Okay, definitely. Okay? Let me just see one other thing here, sleep. I won't miss getting hit. The visits to the hospital after the fight, the stitches, the cuts, the, the bruises and things like that. Uh, my hands always being sore. I ain't gonna miss none of that.
A live shot of that man, Mickey Ward, in Arturo Gatti's dressing room, seven and a half months after that third fight. Ward reports to us that he still suffers from double vision and absence of peripheral vision in the right eye. He's a couple months away from possible surgery if those symptoms don't go away. And his promoter, Lou DiBella, told us last night, Ward has been offered as much as a million dollars by other promoters to come out of retirement and provide some more of the same thrills he provided against Arturo Gatti. To those offers, Mickey Ward says, are they crazy? Mickey Ward is as honest a fighter as you'll ever find, and I think his retirement is as honest as we've ever seen. We shall see, but Arturo Gatti gets ready to fight again. All right, Emmanuel Stewart, uh, Arturo seems genuinely excited about the prospect of fighting for a title belt that Costa Zoo, incidentally, decided to drop. It wasn't uh, important to him. Uh, will the excitement of trying to gain a title for the first time in six years ward off the, the letdown we might expect for Arturo coming off of the trilogy against Ward? No, I don't think that Arturo Gatti knows how to do anything but be exciting. He said that even if he was fighting a sparring partner in a public workout, he would still fight exciting. He loves to thrill the crowd. Uh, he's been the most dominant, I would say, exciting fighter we've had consistently probably about the last 10 years. Great epic fights with Willie Mott Rodriguez, uh, Ivan Robertson, uh, the Ruelas knockout, the three fights here. But nevertheless, he says as much as it's good to hear people at the airport say it's great fights, you look good, I really love your fighting, he said he would rather hear the word Hello, champ. How you doing, champ? So it's been six years since he's had a championship, and he really <laughs> is excited about trying to be a champion again. All right. Uh, Larry Merchant, we've seen it before. Fighters who come from Europe with unbeaten records, all in Europe. Uh, in the case of Bronco, 15 knockouts and 32 fights, probably a little underpowered. Can this guy be a real threat even to a slightly below his best Arturo Gatti? There are a couple of unknowns in this fight, Jim. Bronco was plainly uh, brought to these shivering shores, and the winter in the Northeast hasn't taken any crap this year. You can trust me on that, and you can trust the temperatures as well. But he was brought here basically as a tune down for Gaddy from those wars with Ward. But he's unbeaten, although untested. He has a brother, Silvio, who has a belt discarded by Roy Jones. There's a family tradition from watching him on tape. He knows how to fight. But there's also an unknown about Gaddy, and that's whether these three fights with Ward finally will take some kind of toll on him. And he's had many other of those kind of fights. Most fighters can't be the same after one or two of them. But he is Gaddy. Now, he's been defying boxing writers' predictions of a short career for seven or eight years now, but logic tells you he can't do it forever. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Arturo Gatti against Gianluca Bronco. And you'll see that Gatti's 31, Bronco is 33. Two-inch height advantage for Arturo. They're equal in arm length measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in officially last night at 140 pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Arturo Getty, John Luca Bronco fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. John Luca Bronco's father was a fighter until he lost an arm in a motorcycle accident. Perhaps because of that, Bronco's biggest thrill outside the ring is to ride horses. A one horsepower and a one horsepower vehicle, Jim. Bronco on his first fighting visit to the United States. He had come here once before expecting to fight and then the fight wound up being canceled. Exceptionally sullen and taciturn during our fighter meeting yesterday in what we judged to be an attempt to project a stern fighting character. said that he wasn't particularly impressed with all the thrills that Gaddy has provided to American boxing fans. 
we'll see if he can uh, get impressed tonight. And it turns out that Gaddy is going to be accompanied to the ring by his two famous buddies now. As when you see Arturo Gaddy getting ready to come in, he's going to be flanked by Mickey Ward on one side and Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the other. Dale Earnhardt tells us that to pump fuel into his tank before events, he watches tapes of Arturo Gatti's fights. Behind Gatti in the second rank of followers back there, his manager Pat Lynch, and somewhere back there, the shorter figure of Buddy McGirt. Buddy McGirt's reputation as a trainer is rapidly growing, Emmanuel Stewart. Maybe one of the best things he's done is to convince Arturo Gatti to go back to his boxing skills. So Buddy's doing a great job with not only just his boxing skill, but he knows boxing. He's got a good boxing mind, and he has a great relationship with Arturo. And that means a lot when a guy has a good relationship with his fighter. And now the crowd erupts. As one of the most popular fighters in the history of Atlantic City enters Ford Walk Hall. Arturo Gatti should have on black and white in the old days. He is a phenomenon. It's just one small mark of the excitement Arturo Gatti has brought to the whole boxing world. The boxing writer Dan Raphael of USA Today has a cat named Thunder. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, main events in association with Caesars Atlantic City, Bally's Atlantic City, and the King of Beers Budweiser is proud to present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Gerald Gormley, the three judges at ringside scoring this bout will be from Italy, Guido Cavalieri. From the United States, Tommy Kazmarek. From Thailand, Anek Hongtongkam. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action for the 101st time in a world title bout, former U.S. Olympian Rudy Battle. And now, for the thousands in attendance here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and the millions watching around the world on HBO, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green, white, and red, and officially weighing 140 pounds. He has an outstanding professional record consisting of 33 bouts without a loss, 32 victories with one draw, including 15 knockouts. From Civita Vecchia, Italy, here is the undefeated European champion and WBC number one ranked super lightweight in the world, Gianluca Branca. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with blue. His official weight, also 140 pounds. His professional record, 36 victories, including 28 knockouts with six defeats and a world title. From Jersey City, New Jersey, the man recognized as pound for pound and ounce for ounce, boxing's ultimate blood and guts champion, the former junior lightweight champion of the world, Arturo Thunder. Good night, baby. 
Okay, gentlemen, you have both received your pre-fight instructions. As I instructed you in the dressing room, there is a language barrier. We will be using the three basic commands, stop, break, and box. I will gesture at any fouls. Let's have a nice, clean contest. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves. All right. The last time we had a mandatory challenger from Europe, he ran around the ring and tried to hide behind the referee, then faced Bernard Hopkins. We do not expect that from Bronco. Bronco looks like a guy who enjoys fighting. And his style is pretty similar to that of Arturo Gatti. Gatti just appears to be a little quicker and better, at least on videotape. I think the real uh, issue here is whether Bronco can take a punch. If he can take a good punch, he can stay in this fight and even possibly win it. Yeah, because even though Gatti fights great fights, he still has problems, seem like, with everyone he fights in terms of getting hit. Yeah, he gets hit. He gets and hit. and he gets often hit. when he gets hit, he gets cut. And yep. if he gets cut, then it's anybody's fight. Gatti has landed one big left hook to Bronco's body. Bronco trying to establish a jab upstairs. Bronco seems to be fighting with intensity. Looks like he comes to win the fight. Oh, he's intense. Unlike the guy who fought Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, Murata Carr was not, was not in Philadelphia to win a fight. No. No. You know, his brother is the light heavyweight champion of the world. That's got to mean something. Good straight counter by Bronco with the left hand. Jolted Gatti on the chin. Now Gatti blocking the left hook with his right glove. Bronco's face already reddening. They trade jabs and discover that they have identical reach. Gatti is boxing real good right now. But you know, just a matter of time before he's going to get excited and start slugging. Arturo focusing upstairs, jabbing upstairs. Bronco steps in and fires a left hook that lands on the shoulder. Good left hook to the body by Gatti, and then he steps back out. In the old days, Arturo Gatti would have stayed there to admire his work after that left hook to the body. Buddy McGirt has him moving his feet. Another body punch by Gatti, and again, he steps straight back. Uppercut lands for Gatti. And now the right hand across the top. Bronco having trouble leading. Looks as though he might be able to land when he counters. But when he tries to lead, the deficit in hand speed becomes apparent. Yeah. And the gap in experience is becoming evident already at the end of the first round. They trade left hands. Bronco hasn't shown much pop in round one. Gatti has shown the discipline of a boxer. Again, the left hook to the body landed for Arturo Gatti. Round one finishes with another brace of body punches by Arturo Gatti and a little right hand by Gianluca Bronco. When we go to Bronco's corner, where they will be speaking Italian, our interpreter is Rosano Zisa. It's counting the jab with the right hand. Okay, good boxing, relax. Good boxing, more water. Huh? Relax. It's your show. Okay, just move the head a little more and some more jabs. Okay, now you look at, get a little more relaxed because you're loading up. Don't load up. Let it flow naturally. Okay? Hands free, baby. Okay. When, when you hit with the, with the left, you, you, you can feel it. You're not faster than you. You gotta stay with your legs a little larger. You gotta fight. You gotta fight. You gotta strength, 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 strength. You gotta anticipate him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
CompuBox numbers in round one. Thunder Gotti, 26 out of 71, including 16 of 49 jabs. Bronco, 14 of 54. Arturo Gotti throwing nearly 50 jabs in the first round. Further indication of the degree to which Buddy McGirt has gotten him to focus on his boxing skill. There's a hard right hand over the top by Gatti. Gatti's fighting a very good fight at this stage. He's boxing, he's taking his time, and he's doing a lot of shoulder fainting. Just confusing Bronco, and Bronco at this stage right now really don't seem like he knows what to do. Bronco's 33 previous fights, 32 were in Italy, one was in France. And virtually none of the opponents have names that would be even recognizable to an American boxing journalist. He may not previously have seen the kind of hand speed that Arturo Gatti brings. Body shot again landed for Gatti after the upstairs punches were blocked. Straight right hand lands for Bronco. Now Gaddy moves a little farther back and blocks Bronco's Gatti. next two efforts. Yeah, Gaddy's just a little too elusive right now in every way. Upper body movement, his rhythm. He's getting into his floor. Pretty soon he's going to open up with all of his combinations. Bronco finally lands a couple good jabs. After Gaddy threw 50 jabs in round one, Bronco seems to have decided to jab with the jabber in the second round. And he lands a left hook. Gaddy comes back with a left hook to the body. But the left hook upstairs was Bronco's best punch of the fight. Bronco is uh, effectively avoiding the big punches to the head. We don't know yet what will happen if, if Gaddy lands a couple there. But Gaddy, but Bronco isn't letting him do it. He's taking the body punches. He looks like he has a strong body. And if he can stay in there for a few rounds, he may show something we haven't seen yet. And then you always have to consider the fact that Arturo cuts up very easy and busts up. You know, he never can tell what happens as the fight goes on. Gaddy sneaks in a quick left hook on the inside. Crowd liked it. Another left hook lands for Gatti as Bronco reached for the right hand. Now Gatti strafing Bronco as Bronco's against the ropes. John Lucas says, come on. Gatti smiles. Next Wednesday from Houston, it's inside the NFL's pre-Super Bowl special. The guys will pick the game. You'll also hear from both Bill Belichick and John Fox in exclusive interviews. Okay, they all get caught up in this on all that BS. Okay, we're going one round at a time. Take a deep breath, baby. Nice and relaxed. There we go. That's it. Okay. There we go, baby. Beautiful. Good straight right hand by Bronco. If he can land enough of those, he might be able to cut Gaddy, but he doesn't look like he has the power to hurt him. begins with Bronco trying to make an offensive statement. Bronco looks like he knows how to fight, and he does. He knows how to fight. You know, the question is whether he can mount enough offense.
that was uh, a batty going off balance. Yeah, that was a balance than. thing, yeah. After Arturo landed a couple of body punches. in the fight so far is that while Gaddy has been able to land from time to time in combination, Bronco, though landing, is doing it one punch at a time. That's correct. And then as the fight goes on, I'm wondering with the fact that Bronco has not fought that many long fights either. I think he's only fought one 10 round, I think, or one 12 round. And he's fought a lot of six rounders, which is very common in Europe. Even when you're a top performer or a world champion, sometimes, you know, a world contender, you may fight possibly those six round fights. Well he does appear to be a well conditioned athlete. Straight right hand landed for Gotti. Bronco popping him over the top with the right hand. So far Bronco is effectively neutralizing the bigger punches of Gaddy to the head. He's just not getting hit that often upstairs. Oh. 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 On the other hand, Bronco's body language constantly places him on the defensive as over and over he backs into the ropes and waits for Gaddy to come at it. Gaddy trying to time the right hand as Bronco lunged in. It's been a boxing match, not a brawl. And by a close, not a wide margin, Arturo Gatti outboxes Gianluca Branco in these rounds. Irish Mickey Ward. Unaccustomed to watching Arturo Gatti from such a distance as Gatti fights. <laughs> That's Mickey's fiance. Okay, let's just relax and let's use your hands feel like you've been doing it in the gym. Okay, don't try so hard to knock him out, baby. Okay, just keep using the hands feet. After you punch, stay low and get out. Because what he's doing is waiting for you to finish punching. Finish. At the end of the second round, it was Connor told him that he was winning his round. Now he's telling him that he's controlling him. He's controlling him. He's got to go. Go. Well, in. Uh, Bronco's corner, they think he's starting to control Gaddy. Or they're trying to build his confidence as they ask him to be more offensive. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing. Arturo Thunder Gaddy. Jim, I got to tell you Jim Franco Bronco, the one thing that he's, he's never seen before is he's never seen a guy move his head like this because those Europeans are so straight up, it's unbelievable. And with Bronco laying on those ropes and Gaddy jab, 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 and then comes over the top with a right hand, he can't miss Bronco. He's just outboxing him, out punching him with the right hand. Gaddy fighting a patient fight. Yes, yeah, he's fighting a patient fight. I think in this case, you're one of the few times I would actually like to see him open up more and, and make it a little bit more of a slugfest. Because most of the European fighters are very intelligent technical fighters anyway. And if he makes him fight a lot faster, I think he's going to come unorganized. Gaddy left hook to the body, brings it back upstairs. Bronco throws a right across the top. Impact, yeah. but light impact. Now Gaddy's left eye begins to swell, and you see the line coming in his cheek under that left eye that often leads to bleeding. Yeah, he's got those high cheekbones, which is easy for him to swell up and the cut. But that cut is usually under the eye. It doesn't bother him. That's another reason why I think he should be more aggressive at this stage. So he's going to have to step up the pace. And remember, of course, that he broke his right hand in the last fight against Mickey Ward. So when you see him firing right hands over the top at John Luca Bronco, He's taking a chance on re-injuring the hand. Which is the fourth time he's had surgery on that hand. And that may be another reason why he's not brawling so much as boxing in the fight. Well, he's boxing a lot. I, I think that's what he was trained to do, but Branco is a boxer himself, so that's why he's got an edge, but it isn't it 
type of edge that he would like to have. And I think the only way he's going to do that, he's going to have to go in and try to make Bronco get the fight in the fight that he's used to fighting and Bronco's not used to fighting. Well, the drama begins to unfold. Gaddy will be ahead on the scorecards when he starts to bleed. Bronco will get the energy burst and the encouragement that comes from seeing Gaddy's blood. We'll go into the late rounds with a little suspense. You're reading from an old script. Yeah. <laughs> Bronco just not throwing enough to be in the fight against Arturo Gatti, who's being selective, Very being selective. patient, taking his time, but scoring freely when he needs to. Yeah, right after the title gets through punching and he's relaxed, he comes out with a little punch that he doesn't expect and hits uh, Gatti. His corner is uh, they're very happy about this round. He's, he's, uh, he's going back, he's going back. He's got to attack with his jab, attack with his jab and move. When he when he attacks, don't don't go away. Just stand there, move, move, the jab and move. It, it gets less uh, less uh, speedy, and and uh, you can you can contrast him better. You can you can you can make it. You can make it. Now now you have now you have to you, you have to be sure. You have to attack. You have to attack. Baby. Very good, baby. Nice and relaxed. Huh? It's coming. Yeah, no, you're starting to get it. You're starting to get your rhythm. Very good, baby. Okay? But stay to the body on him. Every chance you get, touch him. Don't have to be a hard time. Rocco is landing some clean punches. There you saw one right between the eyes. Yeah, he's a pretty effective puncher when he does punch. Yeah. Well, he's been told to take the offense. Let's see if he does. Uh, according to his corner, they don't believe Gaddy can fight going back. Uh, he certainly doesn't fight as well as he does coming forward. But who says he's going to go back when he's punched? Stop! Frank! Gaddy grimacing as he bangs his right hand against Bronco's body. I wonder if he's feeling the pain in the right hand again. I don't think so. I mean, he just can't land up a good, clean shot to hit Bronco. But Bronco is always, like, fading out of, out of range every stop, time he comes stop, in stop. with his shoulders huh? angling to a point where he really stop. can't line him up for a good shot. Gaddy reaching to the body. Bronco hitting him on the shoulder as Gaddy gets away. for Bronco. Good shot. Gaddy firing the right hand from close range. Just barely off target. Bronco showing a little bit more willingness to throw. Bronco is fighting with his body, leaning over to the right in a, such an angle where it's very difficult for a turtle to really land him up with the good shots that he was able to do with Mickey Walker. Mickey fights a lot more square on the way to hold his body. But this is the most aggressive yeah. round so far for Gianluca Bronco. He seems more free with his hands in this round than has been the case in the past. Maybe he's getting over the judges a little bit. And as Bronco begins to throw more, Gaddy gets more chances with the right hand. Landed Absolutely. one on the chin a moment ago. Right. Well, once Bronco starts punching, he's going to naturally commit himself a lot more to Keep him up in there. Keep him up. Neither of those punches was low. Again, just as in the first fight, there hadn't been a single clinch in the fight. Stop! Right! Well, there. There was close to a clinch, all right. This is something I'm not used to. Seeing Arturo Gaddy in a boxing match. This is something nobody's used to. <laughs> and, and in that round, he may have been outboxed. Punch a little more. Okay, you stand in front of the guy a little too much, Arturo. You gotta 
find some more, okay? Don't make them stand in front of you like that. Don't stand in front of him like that, okay? You gotta keep boxing this guy. Don't stand in front of him. You gotta use your legs, keep him turning. That's what he's doing, he's waiting for you to stop punching, and then he's punching. And don't look for the knockout. You try to... His trainer is telling him that he's winning the fight. If he, keep, if he fights like this last round, he's gonna win the fight. He's got a control, he's controlling the match, he's doing good. Gianluca is doing very good. You, you have to control the, the, the guy. The more, the, more, the more you use your jab, the better you go. Use your jab. Buddy McGirt's only son of eight ch children made his professional debut earlier tonight and won a decision, James Jr. I'm thinking of all the people in the arena who've been brought to a prize fight for the first time by their buddies to see the human drama that is Arturo Gatti. And right now they're saying to their friends, where's the brawl you told me I was gonna see? Yeah, he doesn't have the same dance partner that he had with Mickey Ward. The other guy always has something to say about what kind of a fight it is. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting that Gaddy has been in so many exciting fights. And to see him fighting a technical fight with a technical fighter is unusual. But I think going down the stretch is going to get heated up because he's going to get that urge to excite the crowd, as he says. And, and that's going to end up taking over and propelling. And regardless of what the instructions are, I think he's going to end up slugging. Through five rounds, CompuBox numbers find Gaddy landing 82 out of 345, Bronco 67 out of 265. So Gaddy throwing more and landing more, but Bronco actually with a higher connect percentage from being so selective. Is Manuel, is there a danger in making, trying to make Gaddy into a pure boxer, into sort of dumbing down what he really does best? You know, that's a good question. I don't have an answer. I mean, I like what he's doing, and I like to see him box, but he's been known to be a slugger. And, you know, and I guess you can't have a long career with every one of your fights being the type of fights he's fought those slugging matches. So definitely to prolong his career, he's going to have to box some. Well, it's a different business for Arturo now. You know, he's uh, gained so much notoriety as the result of what he did in the Ward fights. Now he wants to go back to the higher level. He wants to win a title. He wants to fight people like Costa Zoo. He wants to make superstar money. And in order to do that, he's going to have to box. You know, and, and you're looking at the guys fighting. This is a pretty decent opponent here, too. That determines a lot of how you fight. The guy has good defense, very difficult to hit clean. And when you least expect, he comes back with those little short punches. The last great fighter out of Italy was Nino Benvenuti. Bronco is no Benvenuti in style. You know, I was looking at the Italian flag, and we keep forgetting that Gaddy is Italian, too. Absolutely. And I think he was born in Italy and, and raised in Montreal. Raised in Montreal. Yes. Benvenuti was a, a real top middleweight. Beat Emil Griffith for the middleweight championship. Plus, he was a gold medal winner in the Olympics. Uh, two good shots by Arturo on the inside as he took advantage of Bronco coming in. This has been an excellent boxing round for Arturo Gatti. And we're halfway through the scheduled 12-round fight. And a fight that could go the 12 rounds, too. Okay, now, this is what we got to do, champion. You're boxing them beautiful, but let's move to our right. Okay, don't move to your left so much. Switch up direction on them. Very good, now we're starting to get the rhythm. Okay, now you're starting to get your rhythm. Keep boxing them like that. Don't worry about the crowd. Don't worry about him telling you to come to the ropes. You keep doing what we're doing. Now listen to me. Go to your right more. They're telling me that this round didn't go as good as the last one. It was even. He's got, he's got to fight. He's got to fight more. He's got to move. Because when uh, he goes back, Gary doesn't fight as, as, as strong. He's got, he's hurting. He said, he said he's, he's hurting his, uh, his, uh, his right hand, uh, hand. He's hurt. He's got to, he's got to fight. He's got, he's got to fight. Keep in mind that what you're hearing from Bronco's corner is a reflection of a different culture of boxing in Europe, uh, where they value boxing. Uh, they think they're doing very well. 
There's an Italian judge, one of the three judges tonight. So that's just a difference in perception about what this game is about. I, I agree with you, Larry. It's a big difference. Boxing skills are appreciated more than slugging. In fact, when we was asking during the fighters meeting, Bronco's father, that he studied the tapes of Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti says no. He didn't even wait. He thought that, that was almost an insult the way that they fought. Yeah, he dismissed yeah, those. Yeah, dismissed that as completely. And now Arturo is grimacing again after having hit Bronco with the right hand in the body. And I think the right hand's hurting Emmanuel. It looks very obvious that he's hurt. Yep. He is, he is hurt again in the right hand. And, uh, and by the way, that's one of the reasons that the ultimate blood and guts fighter, Arturo Gatti, is by CompuBox numbers averaging 47 jabs around. So are those 47 jabs around winning for him, Harold? <laughs> when I questioned Jim, I got it six to nothing, 60 to 54, Arturo Thunder Gatti. Jim, I got to say Rudy Battle caught you and Jim Luca Bronco throwing a rabbit punch in a clinch with that right hand for the third time. That's what Gatti backed into the ropes and clinched. I mean, I don't know if his hand hurt or if he got hurt from the rabbit punch, but that's three warnings already for Bronco for rabbit punching. I don't think Battle's going to take much more of it. Whether Gatti has broken his right hand again or whether it's just hurting, he is not but throwing it. He's not throwing it with power. He's, he's throwing it just enough to, you know, make it obvious that it doesn't hurt, but it, it, he's not throwing it with power. And it could be a problem going down the stretch. Good left hook by Bronco. I had the fight five rounds to one, but there were one or two other rounds that were close enough that it could be a legitimate difference of opinion. When Arturo Gatti broke his hand against Mickey Ward in the third fight, he did not win the fight with one hand. Rather, after taking about a round off with the right hand, he went back to throwing it and threw it hard down the stretch of the fight. We'll see if he can do it again tonight as he goes back to throwing the right hand hard there with a shot to the body. Gatti pausing momentarily there. And Bronco gets off one of his best combinations of the night. Now Gaddy hits him with an uppercut. Bronco lands a straight right hand. Fight is getting closer as round seven comes down the stretch. And Gaddy's left eye is getting close to being closed. This looks like this is a round that I would probably give to Bronco. Now let's see what Gaddy says about his right hand to Buddy McGirt. Hey, you gotta box this guy. You can't stand in front of him. You're taking too many unnecessary punches. Okay? Keep the jab working and keep boxing. Don't worry about the crowd. You have to box him. Don't stand in front of him, okay? He started the run off beautiful. Okay, keep boxing him, baby. Keep him turning. Don't stand in front of him. Alright, baby? Let's go, champ. Okay? Let's go, baby. Okay. You may remember. Gaddy hurting his right hand on the hip of Mickey Ward. And there, something like that happened. You see him wincing. Yes. But he did not complain in the corner, possibly because the last time Buddy McGirt said to him, what do you want me to do? Yeah, but it's pretty obvious he has hurt the right hand. Whether he would continue to throw it or not is a different thing, but he has hurt it. The 20 punches Bronco landed by CompuBox numbers in the seventh round, his highest landed punch total for the night. Gaddy also was given credit by CompuBox for landing 20 punches in the round. Harold Letterman, for the first time in the fight, gives a round to Gianluca Bronco. I have it five rounds to two. And once again, there are a round or two where there's a legitimate difference of opinion possible. So this may be closer uh, then we see it. Gaddy landed a left hook inside. Bronco landed a right. It's not out of the question that there's a judge with a scorecard of four rounds to three for Bronco. Yep, you have an Italian judge here also. You know, and sometimes they give a round to a fighter just because he did better in one round than he did in other rounds. They do and it they, all the time. All the time, and that could easily end up with the fight being a little closer officially. It's bogus as all get out, too. Yep. It's political, but we see it all the time. I think it's more human 
or as human as political. Makes sense. Well, we're speaking about Arturo's boxing skills. He's going to have to use them now if his right hand is hurt like we think. And he is using the boxing skills as he crouches, jabs, averaging nearly 50 jabs around in the least Gaddy-like performance we've seen. Bronco says to Rudy Battle, he's banging his head against me, but the big news was that Gaddy fired a right hand to the skull of Bronco. Bronco is growing in his confidence now. And the chance for a brawl increases. Bronco more and more willing to trade with Arturo. He seems to be have gotten a lot more comfortable in the whole atmosphere here now. Look at the head movement for Gaddy. Look at the jab, jab, jab. What a roll reversal. Now Bronco is becoming more confident. And it begins to look that if anybody's going to make it brawl, <laughs> it'll be Bronco. <laughs> but Gaddy with another effective stretch of jab, 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 and landed the right hand hold on, hold on. as Bronco came off the ropes. Punctuate the round. Bronco sticks out his tongue. Listen to me, baby. We got four rounds, okay? We need all four rounds. You got to box and you got to throw combinations. You can't look for the one punch, Arturo. We got to throw combinations. Monday, check out the latest break. HBO Sports documentary, up, The Wild Ride to, to Super Bowl One. Okay? Tired of the hype Keep before Super Bowl 38 next rounds. Sunday? This show looks round. back at but how small the Packers defense. Chiefs game really was. Box, baby. January Boxing. 1967. You gotta throw when you get close to him, give me five shots, four five, and get out. Okay, let's go, baby. How you legs feeling? All right, listen. We got four on. They tell him that he's gonna do something more. Otherwise, if, if he ends like this, he's lost. He's gonna do more. God damn it, he's gonna do more. Otherwise, we lose. He's gonna do more. What you're hearing from Bronco's corner is that they believe that Gaddy will become more of aggressive because they believe their man is winning the fight. But in the eighth round, Gaddy throwing 48 jabs, landed 21 of 70 by copy box numbers. Now look at Bronco, 14 of 54. Bronco had his moments in the round, but Gaddy had more of them. Yeah, there was a lot of times the punches that Bronco landed, Alton had, Gaddy's his head snapping back. And it looked very impressive sometimes to the judges. So you can't really tell how they're scoring. Now, I've been impressed with Bronco is going at a good pace after his last two fights with six round decisions. Well, the judges scored the swelling under Gaddy's left eye. <laughs> American judges know that Gaddy swells in every fight. They're not surprised by it. Any judge, such as the Italian judge, who may not have seen Arturo before, will say, ah, oh, look at the beating he's taken. Straight right hand lands Straight for right Bronco. Hand. He gets away. And even when, when, when Arturo lands his jab, they're not really jabs that really create a lot of excitement. They're half deflected. A brave Arturo Gotti fires the right hand in there twice. Yes. Bronco's like Stomach motion, says Bronco motion. into giving him an opening. Bronco's like motioning to him to come on, taunting him, in fact. And, and most of the exciting punches that are landing cleanly still is going to Bronco. Even though I think he's being outworked. But, you know, the, the punches that are exciting the crowd, for the most part, are really coming from Bronco. Even though he doesn't punch that off. He is being outworked. Absolutely. Daddy's dictating the flow. See that? Oh, right hand by Bronco stuns Arturo Gatti. That's oh. the best punch of the fight for the Italian. 
Watch your hands. Break. Stop. Break. Box. Another hard right hand for Bronco. Gaddy fires the left hook. And Bronco's winning this round with those big shots. Gaddy's being hit with the punches that, that is really uh, seem to have more of an effect. This after Buddy McGirt told Arturo he needed to win each of the last four rounds. That's a good instruction because you never can tell what's happening in the fight. And, and there's a pattern that's going lately. And now Gaddy gets his right hand shot in to end the round. It's seeming now giving these post fights to always go, who baby. wins the last okay. few rounds of the fight. That seems to be the pattern Master. today. Championship rounds, you gotta get listen. going. Listen to me, champ. Keep boxing, keep, go to your right more. Okay, keep boxing them, keep marinating them, keep doing all that. Okay, keep that jab working, keep everything going, but don't stand in front of them. Okay, now let's shoot soft scenes. You're doing well the whole round. The last second you always get hit by the, the right hand. God damn it. You gotta watch it until the, the end. Don't, don't, when, 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 he, when he goes back, you gotta attack. Attack with the, with the, with the right. Your, your right is fast. Left and right. Bronco g gesturing uh, to Gaddy and maybe to the ring judges that those uh, punches didn't land squarely. And ten. Copy box numbers in nine. Gaddy threw more and landed more, but Bronco had those two big shots with the right hand. Harold, how do you have it? Coming to the ten. Okay, Jim. Seven rounds to two. 89, 88, 83, Arturo Gaddy. Jim, I gotta tell you something. Arturo Gaddy's got real good snap to that left jab. I don't think Gianluca Bronco has good snap. Gianluca Bronco seems to throw an awful lot of arm punches with the left jab. He's got a nice right hand, which is the reason why I gave him round seven and nine. But he's, he's sucking up that left jab of Gaddy's, and Gaddy's got a real good snap to it. Hard right hand by Gaddy. Bronco nodding and smiling. Bronco got in a little right hand. Gaddy landed as well. So the punch that starts it off in this round is a Gaddy right. Yeah, of, of all the punches. Especially if his right hand is hurt. Arturo dancing and jabbing. Playing the role of the boxer tonight. Emmanuel, should Gaddy try to make a brawl out of it? I think Gaddy should try to make a ball on it. But I, I, it's hard for him to do that with this guy. But it, 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 it's a, I think he could have a much bigger margin if he would do that. Because the way it is now, he's winning the fight, but it's still leaving room for God and doubting, particularly going down the stretch in the next couple of rounds. Combination by Gaddy. Bronco not as busy as his corner might have wanted him to be in this round. He's still hoping to counter punch. He wants Gaddy to go first. Good left hook by Gaddy. Good right hand by Bronco. Another left hook by Gaddy inside. Arturo fires the right, misses over the top. Come on! Come back. Whoops. Slugging and trading with him. They're on their feet in Atlantic City as Arturo Gaddy has brought the crowd to life again. Thunder 
in round 10. A time to breathe, to stay calm, stay calm, breathe. You're gonna be all right. You gotta breathe bad. You gotta breathe. You gotta breathe. They, they And tell him to breathe, to stay calm, stay calm, breathe. You're gonna be all right. You gotta breathe bad. You gotta breathe. You gotta breathe. They, they, they just tell him to stay calm and uh, be, be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. What happened here, I believe, is that Branca pulled back yep. and was caught by the end of a hook. And, you know, that same punch that he landed there, he's landed it so many times. I call it the clean-up left hook after you throw a right hand. Guys, the they traded yeah. left hooks, and Gaddy's was bigger. It's as simple as that. But he lands it often in his big fights. Now, what he should do this round is to come out and make it a slug fest and pick up right where he left off. Put the pressure yeah. on. That's what Emmanuel Stewart yeah. says to John Luca, I mean to Arturo Gatti, as John Luca Bronco's legs wobble as he comes out of the ring for the 11. Because Bronco, I don't think, is that big a puncher anyway. I think he's an accurate puncher, but not a really tremendous hard puncher. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Let's keep it clean. All right, let's go. All right. There is a guttural roar, roar from this crowd wanting to see Gaddy close the show. They love this man. One thing Arturo Gatti's never done in his career is to knock a man out after the 10th round. I think he's making a mistake by boxing right now. He needs to move in and throw his right hand even if he doesn't land with Pat and come back with that same clean up left hook again. If it landed once, it'll land again. I like that phrase, Emmanuel, clean up left hook. You don't see it. Safter got those the right hand the way his body is. You never see the hook that comes behind the right hand. Right, because they're not on balance. That's correct. Gaddy finally on, stepped Chris. in and fired the right hand hard, Box. landing a one-two. John Luca Bronco's left eye is starting to close from Gaddy's right hand. Bronco is showing us some of his own courage. He's a good athlete. Break, 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 he came in condition, come on, come on. took some heavy body blows earlier in the fight, and he's still here trying. Trying to open that cut on the left side of Gaddy's face. Hasn't been able to do it so far. Good left hook by Arturo Gatti. Moves back away. Takes a right hand from Bronco. Arm punch. In fact, Bronco may be winning this round. Bronco may be winning this round. Big right hand by Bronco. Two in a row. Gatti's done. Best flurry of the fight by Gianluca Bronco. Lands another right hand. Gaddy's going to stand in and fight with him for the last 10 seconds of the round. Blood in the mouth now of Arturo Gatti. He should have jumped on Bronco as soon as the bell rung in the beginning of this round. And as Bronco result, lands another left hook to punctuate yes. the round. And Arturo Gatti's face is mercilessly, mercilessly swollen as he comes to his corner between 11 and 12. Doctor's going to look at Gatti. What round do we got here? This is it. Okay, listen. Arturo. This is it, baby. Three this minutes. is three minutes and you're on top of the world again. But you got to box. You're doing very good. Force it. Go ahead, go ahead. You're going to knock him down. Keep it up. You're going to knock him down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Breathe. Breathe. You're doing, doing good. You're doing very good. Last round. Last round, Arturo. You'll be working. All the hard work that you've done the last two years is going to show him. You get, you get, when, when he, he lost all his strength, he lost all his strength. Bronca did not come here like some piece of Italian pastry 
ready to be eaten up. He came to fight. All credit to him. He landed 10 of 21 power shots in the 11th round, including those two big right hands. Gaddy's left eye swollen almost all the way shut now as they begin the 12th. Remember, Gaddy scored the knockdown in the 10th round. Which gives him a two-point round. And he's better be glad that Bronco is not a big puncher because he's really been getting hit with a lot of right hands tonight. But unfortunately, Bronco is not really a power puncher. Well, for instance, if Costa Zhu on his game hit Gaddy with that many right hands, Arturo wouldn't be standing up. No, I don't, I don't think so. But you can't never tell about Arturo. You know, he, he may go down and still get up and knock someone out. A little bleeding under the right eye of Gianluca Bronco. Reaching with the left hook. Gaddy looks over at our table. As if to say, I'm in a fight here. And lands another big left hook. Stunning Bronco with a shot right to the chin. You heard Buddy McGirt telling Arturo to box. Uh, it's funny, he can't get a good boxing rhythm with this guy. When he starts boxing, he still gets hit with those right hands. Well, never during the fight did Buddy McGirt agree with Emmanuel Stewart's observation that Gaddy might be more comfortable brawling with the guy. Even when Gaddy is boxing his jabs, he very seldom lands really clean jabs. For the most part, this guy Jeff Branco usually parries the jabs and they very seldom land clean. Searching for another knockdown to try to seal the deal. He's amazing. I thought his right hand was broke and then still may be damaged, but he's still throwing the right hand again. A courageous fighter. As incidentally as John Luca Bronco. trying to acquire a title belt for the first time in six years since he lost a 130-pound crown to Angel Manfredi in January of 98 here in Atlantic City. Argatti has boxed most of the way and he lands another big left hook through blinding This eye. is the way he should have fought the entire fight to last three rounds. They fought. And Mickey Ward enjoyed watching from ringside <laughs> rather than being a part of it. A good, hard-fought fight. Big crowd, excited even with a fight that was an intense boxing match. And some suspense as the final scores are totaled up. Harold, what does your scorecard say? <laughs> okay, Jim. You know, we got judges here from three different continents, but I like the American style. 117, 110, nine rounds to three, Arturo Thundergaddy. Jim, I gotta tell you, I just thought that a jab, 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 moved his head, he was elusive, uh, had much more snap to his left jab, landed the much harder hooks, and when he did throw the right hand, he landed the much harder right hands. Jim Luca Bracco, to me, is a guy that stood straight up, didn't have a lot of snap to his left jab, had a nice right hand, which I thought won him in rounds 11, uh, 7 and 9, but uh, all in all, I thought it was an easy Gaddy victory. I thought Harold. it was a closer fight than that, and I wouldn't be surprised if it uh, was a majority or split decision. Would either of you be surprised if the Italian judge has the fight scored for Gianluca Bronco? <laughs> you just no. heard what I said about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And his name is Guido Caballeri, Caballeri, 51 years old from Italy. Notable fight, Carlos Gonzalez against Giovanni Parisi. For those of you who noted that fight, he had Gonzalez ahead. Anik Hong Tong Cam, Mosley De La Hoya, like both other judges, scored for Mosley 115-113. And Tommy Kasmarek, American veteran, had uh, Forrest beating Mosley 
in the first Forrest Mosley fight. So did two other judges as well. Neither fighter's going to look too good in the morning. Both faces took a lot of punishment during the night. Mostly it was a boxing match. Elements of a brawl surfaced in the last few rounds. Yeah, it had to make us have a good slugfest at certain points, but it turned out to be a good fight all the way around still. You got a little bit of everything. But I was very impressed with this Bronco. New guy who I've never heard of. I didn't expect would go over five or six rounds. Uh, and he surprised me going down a stretch. May have won two of the last three rounds. He looked like uh, something we've seen before, an underpowered European who stood too straight up. But as he demonstrated all night long, he knows how to fight. He has the right instincts. Here was the one knockdown in the fight as they traded left hooks in the 10th round. Gaddy's left hook was bigger. Deposited Bronco on the seat of his pants. If it's a close fight on the scorecards, that could conceivably turn out to be the difference. There's Bronco's father hugging his son. As I mentioned, Bronco Sr. was himself a fighter before losing his right arm in a motorcycle accident. He should be and very now, proud of his son. Michael Buffer has the official particulars on the score. Ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City and Bally's Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Tommy Kazmarek, 116 to 111. Guido Cavalieri, 115 to 112. Anek Hong Tong Kam, 116 to 111. All for the winner. And now the WBC Super Lightweight Champion of the World from Jersey City, New Jersey. Now a two-time world champion, Arturo Thunder. Well, to use a Greek word where I would prefer to know an Italian one, kudos to the Italian judge for not allowing his nationality to interfere with his view of the competition in the fight. Unanimous decision win for Gatti, and Arturo holds a title for the first time in six years. Whether it becomes a stepping stone to bigger fights and a chance to be be become a real superstar in the sport competitively remains to be seen. He's already, from an entertainment value standpoint, the superstar of the sport. Final copy box numbers, Gaddy 230 out of 838. Bronco landing 62 punches fewer, throwing 192 fewer punches. Both of them landing at about the same connect percentage. Gaddy's percentage improved down the stretch of the fight as he began to throw punches more freely. Jabs. Arturo Gatti in 12 rounds through 550 jabs. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not brawling. That's boxing. Bronco, 86 out of 391. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner, Thunder Gatti. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Arturo. Uh, you have the belt you wanted, but you don't seem completely elated about it. Was the, did the fight not go the way you had hoped it would? Uh, not at all. I, you know, I, things were not coming out right uh, tonight. I felt uh, it's a little sluggish. I don't know why. I was in great shape for this fight. Uh, you know, I won with my heart, and uh, you know, I used my boxing skill to conquer Gianluca. But it's just my hand again in the fifth round. I hurt my hand, and that's when I started getting comfortable. And everybody said, "So you using your speed?" You know, I didn't want to complain or say it again in the corner. That I broke my hand again, so I just tried to do that as best I can. Uh, from your long experience with broken hands, you think you broke it again? Yes, I broke my hand again, definitely. All right, we will show uh, uh, something from that uh, round that showed where you hit him on the hip, almost identical to what happened against Mickey Ward. It's just, it's my favorite uh, body shot, I love. I love that shot, and I know it's, it's too bad that the hip is right there. I know I'm gonna keep hitting that, throwing that punch, and I'm gonna keep hitting my hand like that. Was he a better fighter than you anticipated? Uh, that one I knew he was a, a guy I never saw. I never saw him fight. And uh, Europeans fighters are good fighters. They have a lot of heart, tough. 
and he started me well. You know, he came in tonight to win this title. He, he tried to beat me. He, very, he did very good, but you know, I was, I was smart enough to uh, outpunch him and outbeat him by points. Do you, you, uh, do you feel you outboxed him enough that perhaps you didn't have to do more slugging, or did you really feel that maybe I've got to go after this guy a little bit more? No, I think with, uh, with my boxing it was uh, plenty enough, but I hit him with the left hook that I even tried throwing it because I threw it the right way with speed. And I couldn't finish with my right hand. I couldn't throw combination like the way I wanted to, like I usually do. But that's no excuse, and I came through tonight. I got to thank God, and I'm um, the world champ. Do you think in any way that your performance tonight is an aftermath of you know, three hellacious fights with Mickey Ward, no matter how well conditioned you are. Well, Larry, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know about that. You know, I know I had 30 rounds with Mickey Ward. Took a lot out of me, I'm sure. But uh, came back tonight. I won the title. I listened to my trainer. But, you know, it's just a smart trainer, and he helps me to go through the rounds. And I got to thank God for that. When you finally knocked him down with that left hook, did you feel that seals the deal? Well, I think I was winning. I was winning the fight, and my heart, I know I was winning the fight, but I just couldn't let him catch up to me, and that's what we made sure that Buddy told me that in the corner. All right, now we're hearing that your next opponent could be the unbeaten Leon Duran, the former lightweight champion, another Montrealer, perhaps up in Montreal. Is that this summer? Is that what you're looking forward to? Well, if that's what that's what my promoters want. If my manager decide that's my next opponent, I would love to, especially in Montreal. I'm from there, and uh, they deserve a title defense from me. Thank you very much, Arturo. Again, congratulations. Thank you very Jim. Much, Larry.